All right. Now, it's taken as self-evident these days that something called gender exists and that it is distinct from biological sex and that the former, and perhaps even the latter, they tell us now, is an artificial social construct. But these ideas were not always self-evident. In fact, they weren't evident at all for the entire history of the human race up until about a century ago. Thousands of generations lived and died, engaged in art and science and philosophy and everything else that comprises human civilization, all while assuming that there were only males and females and rarely finding any need for other categories. In the 20th century, that all changed. Considering the magnitude and suddenness of this shift in our understanding of human nature, we should probably take the time to acquaint ourselves with the people responsible for it. And when it comes to the concept of gender and gender constructs, there is no better place to start than a guy by the name of Dr. John Money. Uh, he's a prominent, was a prominent psychologist and sexologist. Money was one of the early pioneers of the gender theories that are currently taught in grade schools and universities. Um, among the first to, to take the word gender out of the realm of grammar, which is where it originates, and apply it to people, he coined the terms gender role, gender identity, sexual orientation. All of that is from him. A professor at York University recently published a book labeling John Money the man who invented gender. So suffice it to say, he, he was an extremely influential man, and anyone who propagates left-wing gender theory today is parroting at least some of the ideas of John Money, whether they know it or not. And most of the time, they don't. But that fact uh, that they're parroting his ideas ought to trouble gender theory proponents because John Money was, among other things, a fraud, a quack, and an abuser. Along with more conventionally degenerate views, his, open, his advocacy of open marriages and group sex, for example, Money was also, as a not very critical article in Salon puts it, ambivalently supportive of pedophilia. Now, drawing a distinction between what he called sadistic pedophilia and affectional pedophilia, Money held that a relationship between a grown man and a child who really love each other should not be considered disordered. Speaking to a Dutch, uh, a Dutch publication, a pro-pedophilia publication, Money explained, quote, If I were to see the case of a boy aged 10 or 12 who, who's intensely attracted towards a man in his 20s or 30s, if the relationship is totally mutual and the bonding is genuinely totally mutual, then I would not call it pathological in any way. His tolerance for child rape may help explain some of the events that transpire later in the story. Um, jumping ahead now to 1965 and the birth of twins Bruce and Brian Raymer. The boys are born healthy except for a condition called phimosis, which affects the foreskin. It was decided incorrectly, it turns out, that the best way to treat this condition was circumcision. But Bruce's procedure went horribly wrong and his penis was essentially burned off of his body. After several months of grasping for answers, Bruce's parents eventually decided uh, to take him to Johns Hopkins in Baltimore to see the renowned Dr. John Money. The good doctor, eager to prove the legitimacy of his theory that gender is a product of environment and culture, recommended that Bruce undergo sex reassignment surgery as a baby. Um, and before the boy turned two, the deed had been done. His testicles were removed. Some crude approximation of female genitalia were formed. And Money instructed the parents to raise him as a girl from that day forward, never tell him about his real identity. So the Reimer parents tried to follow Money's advice, but they found that Bruce was still Bruce, even if they called him Brenda and did everything in their power to preserve his fragile and false female identity. Gender is a construct, they were told. Why should a boy raised as a girl still have boyish tendencies? Yet his boyishness came through in spite of Money's theories. The boys also attended regular therapy sessions with Money. Uh, for quote-unquote therapy, Money sometimes instructed the boys to disrobe and inspect each other's genitals. Sometimes they were made to simulate sex acts on each other. Money explained that this uh, was meant to be healthy sexual exploration. On at least one occasion, nude photographs of the boys were taken. Ultimately, Money was convinced that you know, his project had been a smashing success, and he bragged of his triumphs in many published works. It was not a success. The female identity never took hold for Bruce because he wasn't a female. He was confused and miserable. He was on the verge of suicide at the age of 13. Finally, his mother told him the truth. When Bruce heard about this, he chose immediately to trans transition back to a boy. He took the name of David. Uh, he underwent another reassignment surgery, this time to try and reclaim his true self. And he felt better for a time. But um, neither he nor his tw twin brother lived happily ever after. 
their experience as John Money's lab rats had damaged them irrevocably. David would go on to speak out against money at first anonymously and then publicly. His brother did too. Eventually, David even got married, but all was not well. The first twin to kill himself was Brian in 2002 at the age of 36. The brother who was used as a control group in Money's human experiment took a lethal dose of antidepressants. Two years later, David drove to a grocery store parking lot with a sawed-off shotgun, shot himself in the head. Their deaths will go down in history as suicides, but they were both murdered by John Money, the father of modern gender theory. I wish that this was all just a bit of tragic and disturbing historical trivia. Unfortunately, though, John Money's experiment, although it was a catastrophic failure and his theories were dramatically disconfirmed, he still achieved a victory on the cultural battlefield. Today, ideas first proposed by a man who thought child rape could be loving and who performed a years-long sexually abusive experiment on two unwilling children who later went on to kill themselves are taken as gospel truth, and to question them is heresy. The Raymer twins were the first victims of money's quackery, but certainly not the last. In recent years, there's been an explosive rise in gender confusion among children. Kids are drugged and sometimes mutilated, all in accordance with a theory that was proven false by the guy who came up with it. Money's modern disciples are just as dishonest as Money himself was, though, so they push this sex reassignment stuff and other barbarities while claiming that the science proves the efficacy of these measures. It doesn't. They're lying. The most extensive and legitimate research done on the subject has found that transgenders still have sky-high suicide rates even decades after their surgeries. This is no surprise. As David Raymer's parents discovered, you cannot reassign someone's genetically and biologically hardwired sex. You can dress them in different clothes, you can chop off body parts, but none of that can change their DNA. You can alter the way a person looks, you cannot alter their biological nature. You cannot change who they are. John Money's experiment failed. The experiment that our society has been carrying out on our children ever since has also failed. In its infancy, gender theory wrought only confusion, despair, and death. As it grows, the results have not changed. They've only become more widespread. Yet, we continue down along this path, pretending not to notice the carnage. I think we need to start noticing it. Thank you for tuning in to The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative uh, outlets in the entire country. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and then subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.